Today I want to show you guys how uh, you can upgrade ESXi from uh, version 6.5 or version 6.7 to directly 7. But there is some requirements. So first you have to consider actually your ESXi host is running on which hardware, like which server, which vendor. That means is it a Dell server or it is a uh, HP server? Based on that, you have to apply the update. So whenever you apply the update, make sure one thing. So you target to you target is to upgrade ESXi from one version to another, right? But you have to consider another thing, which is the host you are running. You have to make sure that host hardware, that means firmware, as up to date. So if it is HP, then you have to check which HP firmware version you are running, and you have to apply the latest HP firmware, and then you're gonna do the second step. You're gonna do uh, ESXi host update. So though that's what I wanna show you in this video. So so I have a HP server. I want to show you actually how you can apply the upgrade. Right. So first thing is firmware update. So I'm going to show you step by step. The host is you have to put in a maintenance mode. You have to power off or you have to move the machine from one host to another, or you can power off the machine and put the host in the maintenance mode. Uh, so this is the standard host. That's why I'm, I'm not able to move the machine from this host to other host. Um, so my target is to upgrade ESXi from 6.0 to 6.5. But this is the uh, HP ProLint DL rack server 180 model. So 180 has some limitation. Limitation means it's a pretty old model. So you cannot up, uh, upgrade to 6.7 or 7 version ESXi. So you can run up to 6.5. So our target is upgrade the ESXi 6.5. But before you upgrade ESXi 6.5, you have to do firmware update because you have to check the firmware. Firmware is up to date, so you have to log into like this, and then you can check the version, right? But I have a plan, so I you know apply the firmware update through one of the um I, I, um not this console. I'm not going to use this console because if you log in there and you start process to upgrade and somebody else logged in, so they will take the priority. So your your job will be. Uh, postponed it so their job will be start so in that case you have to start it again you don't know like who gonna be logging there maybe it's from your team or maybe other team somebody can be logging any time right so everybody if everybody has access they, they can what whoever is access they can log in there so you don't know who gonna log in there and what time so that's why i always recommend i have a okay f11 Okay. All right. So I have a tool here, which is called ILO Integrated ILO Integrated Remote Console, and also I downloaded uh, Gen Nine. I have downloaded Gen Nine um, Service Pack from HP Portal, and also I have Ten Service because. If you want for Gen 10, so you need this service pack, ISO file. And also I downloaded HP ILO Integrated Remote Console. This is a very pretty small tools, but the benefit is if you install this one and log into this one, if any other persons from your organization, if they logged in through this browser and they access the ILO, they cannot take the priority. So you, you, you have the prime priority. So you can, whatever you are doing, you can do that. So that's why I always recommend to use these tools. So I have already installed. So if you look, click here, and then network address means your FQDN of the ILO or maybe IP address of the ILO, then username and password. That's it, and then connect. So when you say connect, it's going to connect. So that means you connected through the ILO, right? You connected through the ILO, right? But now you can start the process, but before you start the process, make sure uh, your host 
Uh, actually, I did some steps. That's why it's in maintenance. It's already not response. So what do you have to do? You have to power off all the machines if it is standalone. And if it is not standalone, you don't need to power off. You just need to migrate VM from this host to another host. If it is a cluster system or if you have a available host. But mine is standalone. There is no other host. That's why I power off. Then I put this host as a maintenance mode. I put in the maintenance mode and then I turn off the alert from the monitoring tools because otherwise monitoring tools going to be generate alert, uh, which is which is painful. You have to turn off the alert. Now I'm going back to my jump machine because why I'm using jump machine because I don't want to run anything from my laptop directly because my laptop is running with Wi-Fi connections. So Wi-Fi connections can be interrupted anytime. So if it is interrupted in between because this installation process will take maybe 30 minutes, maybe one hour, maybe two hours, maybe sometimes three or four hours, more sometimes eight hours. So if you are 50% down in the meantime, you have a network, uh, like uh, if you have Wi-Fi issues or something happen. So you have to do this process again from the beginning, which is very painful. So that's why I always recommend use a jump machine because the jump machine is running from your data center, um, um, somewhere from your data center, which is locally. So if you turn off your laptop, it doesn't matter. The, whatever the process you run from your computer, that's the start. Okay. So I logged in there, right? So after I logged in, actually, this is not the window. The window you want to get it is different window. I did already some process. So what do you have to do? You what should be your, your job. Your job is to create virtual drives, go to the image here, image file, and you have to select this one, Gen 9, right? Because this is our Gen 9 machine, Gen 9. And then you have to go to the file and you have to go to the whole boot. And then it's going to be booting. You want to see a booting screen. Uh, let's do it again. Let's do it again because it's not going to take that long. So, but you have to wait. Or I can save the time because you, th that's the way you can attach the ISO file. And then you're going to do cool boot. Whenever it's booting, you're going to see the screen. It, it takes maybe five to 10 minutes. And then it's going to be loaded. And in here, it's going to show F10, F11. So hit F11. Whenever you hit F11, and after that, it's going to show you this. Whenever it's loading is done, it's going to show you this. In here, you're going to hit Enter two times. Two times Enter. I hit two times Enter. And then you're going to see another menu. So, so number one, one time boot to boot to CD-ROM. So I already attached CD-ROM here. See, it's a virtual CD. It's a virtual CD. That's why the number one, first one, is skip number one. I hit number one. Now it's going to boot it from the CD from service pack. Now you have to hit down arrow one time or two time, whatever down arrow. I hit already down arrow, but it's not going. Sometimes you have to click here. Okay, it's selected. Now hit enter. Down one, which is indicator. Not the auto one. You have to do the, the manual one. Now it's loading. The loading the kernel. So I'm not sure how long it takes. Uh, it depends on the remote site because I'm sitting here and I'm upgrading my host. Maybe it's in different location. So the the so now it depends on that location internal speed plus my speed. So you have to wait. This is the way you can apply the firmware update on HP server. So HP server update is pretty simple. Again, it's taking time. In the meantime, I'm going to show you guys again. So you have to download the required software in your laptop. Then you have to copy those software to your uh, uh, job machine. Or you can directly download your job machine because I I cannot download directly on my job machine because the, my job machine is running on a Windows server and that machine has some uh, GPU policy, so I cannot access internet uh, or outside website to the machine. That's why I downloaded locally on my laptop and then I move it to this machine, job machine. All right. So look like the I have a pretty good speed. 
So it's loading. So I have downloaded already uh, service pack nine, service pack 10. Also I have um, party software because I have to do the some before I install uh, ESXi, I have to remove some BIP file from the ESXi there. So I need to log in ESXi through the party software. And um, I have ESXi version 6.7, 6.5 and 7.2, 7.0.2. So all those ISO files I downloaded. This ESXi I have downloaded from this is here HP Gen 9 is a customized HP customized. Make sure your ESXi ISO files should be customized based on the vendor. If it is HP server, then HP customized. If it is Dell, then Dell customized. So mine is HP customized because it's HP server. And service spec, you have to you have to log into the HP portal because if you wa works for a company and you, you will have it, um, you should have access on HP portal through your company's email address because a company will allow you to have access there. So you have to log in with your company email address in HP portal, and then you will be able to download whatever the service spec you need. So based on your hardware, if it is a Gen 9, then download the Gen 9 latest um sp firmware so it looked like this one is released on 2021 but now today is 2023 but hp last for gen 9 the release last one is this version so i don't have to do anything right whatever they release latest i have to download that one all right in the meantime uh the loading process um, which is called copying root files. If you see, look, look at on the bottom, copying a root file system image to RAM disk. Please wait. So it's uh, copying the uh, system images to the RAM disk. So we have to wait until it's finished. It depends on the, um, the remote side in terms of speed plus my speed. So if something, um, So the whole process, like the firmware update, ESXi update, everything, uh, took about two hours, approximately, if it has a good speed from both sides. But in, in some case, I have an experience, like it took about uh, more than 16 hours. This is the worst case scenario. So, Sometimes you have to face like those kind of issues, like um, the side is slow, it's disconnecting several times. You have to load it again and again. So some painful things can be happen, but it's very rare. Usually it takes about max two hours. Like completing, applying the far more update and ESXi update. And we're doing all other process. It's not just you are applying the update because you have to send email notification to the uh, remote side office. And also you have to communicate some other engineer, remote side engineer. And whenever you are done, you have to send email. And also you have a ticket open. You have some, you know, maybe you have to maintain some um, files, record files, like for the report. How many hosts you are done? How many hosts are left? So you have to fill up all those things and you have to send email whenever you are done and you have to close the ticket. So a lot of other stuff to do. So everything together is going to take maybe around two hours. In general. Right, it looks like it's 100%. So I'm just waiting. All right, look like I'm going to going for the next steps. So RAM disk load is done. You see here the response. See this one is, is blinking. So the, whenever you see this, the middle one is blinking and this one is green, that piece is good. Response is very good. 
But if you see there's no activity, that means something happened in the background. Maybe it's frozen or something. Now it's working, see? The middle one is blinking and the, all the way left one is green. So everything looks good. So if it's not loaded, don't worry about it because it's gonna be loaded eventually. You will see something else very soon. Yes. Okay, so now you should just click on accept and click next and far more update. So smart storage administrator, this option is for what? Like if you want to configure the RAID system, disk system, disk RAID, RAID configuration, you should go there. But I'm not doing anything with this. I'm doing far more updates. So I'm going to click here. And it says, please wait, loading. No. It, it, it will take a little bit of time. Just wait. All right. So now it's going to load automatically and it's going to clear the inventory like um, So you have to wait. It's going to happen automatically. You're going to see some activities very shortly. OK, see here, general service pack for prevent inventory in progress is going to be 100%. So total inventory components found 1,005, right? And it's going to be loaded here now. It's going to take time, maybe 10 minutes. So we have to wait. All right, so Look like everything is loaded. His uh, update required is already done. It's full, complete, and then this button is highlighted. Previously, this button wasn't like that. It was like this. Now it's green, right? So you can click here, next. And then from the list, you can choose here. You see here, uh, recommended, critical. All the recommended and critical is already selected. One of the options it says is not selected. So if you see something, it says optional that you don't need to. But if it is a recommended, then you should do that. You should do that if it is recommended. So it's, I can click here and then I can force it. I can force it, right? This one also I can force it. Then so this one I don't need it. And then you can say that one. So deployment started and it's going to take time and it's in uh, maybe within five or 10 minutes, in some point, you're going to be disconnected from this console because it's upgrading uh, all the hardware inside the server, right? So it's going to update also um, ILO console. So if it is, whenever it's ILO, ILO has a, ILO is a device, right? It's a, um, um, it's a device attached with your Ethernet connections. So that device also updating. So when it's updating, you're going to be disconnected because it's going to be reset. It's going to be restart. The ILO port is going to be restart. So that's why you're going to be disconnected. So you can disconnect it for, for a while, like maybe, maybe another five to 10 minutes. And then you need to reconnect it again. And after that, you're going to see the other progress. So when it's done, then just reboot the server. Now it's not highlighted. You cannot reboot it. Whenever it's done, everything is done. You can reboot it. So this process, at some point, is going to be disconnect me. And I have to wait maybe four to five minutes. After five minutes, I will try to log back in again. OK, see here. IRC session closing. The remote console session has been closed due to the firmware upgrade. So I am disconnect, disconnected from the ILO. So click OK. Now it's going to be closed. See, it's closed, right? So now if you open it again and say connect, you will not be able to connect it um, because you have to wait it. Well, you have to wait at least four or five minutes. So I'm going to wait. I'm not clicking here right now. So I'll do it 
like after five minutes. What should the next step? So after it's done, I'm going to reboot it. After it's reboot, it's going to reload the ESXi. It's going to reload the ESXi. Then it's going to come back online again. Make sure if it's online by, by, like by default automatically, the machine will be power on. So you have to power up again and you have to make sure this is a maintenance mode. And if it is a maintenance mode, after that, you have to come here and you have to log into the party session. You have to log into the party. But if you log into the party, we are, but make, one thing you have to make sure on the configuration side, services, and make sure SSH is running. So in this host, SSH is running. I don't need to turn on. But if you cannot log into the party, that means the problem is your SSH is turned off. So you have to turn on the SSH. You can select the SSH and select start. So where you have to go, select the host, go to the configuration, then on the left side middle is services, and then on the right side, you're gonna get the list SSH, and you're gonna see the status. It's gonna be it's gonna show like a stopped, then you have to just click start. That's it. And then come back here again. And in here, put the fully qualified domain of your host and or IP address of the host. Click OK, open. So you can you'll be open party session. I'll show you shortly later on. And after whenever you logged in, and then uh, you have to remove, you have to remove the, you have, you have to run some command to remove the BIF files. Because if you have those existing BIF files, you cannot upgrade to 6.5. 6.5 is OK, but 6.7 or 7 version actually, uh, you cannot install in, in instruction. Whenever you are trying to install the ESXA or upgrade to the seven version, in the middle of somewhere is going to be stopped. So that's why this. You have to run this command. 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 So I'm going to run all those. Maybe all uh, one, two, three, four, five. All five commands is not for each and every ESXA. Maybe. Maybe two of them are gonna work. Maybe three of them are gonna work. But I'll recommend you to run everything, all files. It's not gonna hurt anything. He's gonna just remove the review file. Okay. So I give enough time. Now I'm going to connect it again. And just wait. All right. Look like I'm able to log connecting. So I just double click on it, make a big screen. Now here you have to wait until it's finished. Look like it's almost done. It has just this much left, but you have to wait. All right, it's done. So it says deployment done. So deployment done. Just scroll down and see. Now you'll be able to reboot it. Reboot. And then, yes, reboot. So now it's rewarding. So now it's rewarding the server. I don't have anything on my CD-ROM. So it's going to be load uh, ESXi, the existing ESXi. I just applied the firmware update. What I did so far, so I just applied the firmware. So you see here, the version is 2.0. 90. Previously it was 2.20. Now it's 2.90. So this is the update I applied. This is up to date. 2. Point, see here v2.90. Previously it was v2.20 or something. So I have applied the latest far more update. Now, now my second step is to remove, after it's loaded the ESXi, I'll remove the BIP files, and then I'm gonna attach the same way, I'm gonna attach the ESXi from here, like image file, image file, and then I'm gonna select the ESXi, whatever the ESXi sh I should apply. So this is Gen 8 server, so Gen 8 server, sorry, it's Gen 9, but it's uh, model number is um, DL180. So 180 not gonna support 6.7. Um, anyway, I have to, uh, I have to do this one, 6.5. So I'll select 6.5, customize, HP customize ISO file. 
this XI as a file. So I'll, I'll select this one and then it will start update. So I'm not going to do right now, but I just give time to load uh, ESXi. Now, first step is what? Upgrade the form, uh, apply the firmware upgrade. So firmware upgrade is done. You see here, all everywhere is 2.90, right? So firmware is done. Now your job is to load the, the old ESXi, which is 6.0, 6.0. And whenever the ESX is loaded, you have to log into the party session and run some commands to remove the beep files. And then whenever you are done with the removing beep files, then the third option is to attach a CD like ESXi uh, target version as a virtual CD now. And then call boot and then just leave it and it's going to be load ESXi. Whenever after it, and it will take maybe 10 to 15 minutes to load the ESXi after it's done. It's and then you're gonna, it's gonna show you some options. So you have to follow the instruction and based on that, you can install the, um, you can upgrade the ESXi. So that's what I'm gonna show you later on. I'm just waiting. Okay, it's automatic. I did nothing, I did nothing. I just reported, I did nothing. So it's loading automatically the previous um, ESXi, which is 6.0. This is gonna be load, short time. You have to wait until it's loaded. All right, it's loading. See, the success is expensive because we didn't upgrade yet. We didn't upgrade yet. So you have to wait. All right. So the previous success is loaded with the latest upgraded firmware. Okay, party session and you put it here, uh, the um, FQDN of your ESXA host or IP address of the ESXA host and then click open and then accept. I'm going to make it a big screen and log in there with your credential. Okay, I'm logged in. Now we need to run the command, the five commands I showed you. So you have to log in there, looks like pretty easy. So just copy this command and paste it here and hit enter and then copy the second one. See, it's removed the BIP file. BIPs removed. Now second one, enter. I'm going to execute second one. And now I'm going to copy the third one, copy. And in the meantime, second one is done. See here, BIP remove, Q logic. And third one, it's, there is no third one. It's fine. If it is not, it's fine. And then fourth one. I believe fourth one is not there. Okay. And the fifth one, finally. Okay. Maybe it's not there also. Yes, no beep matching. It's fine. And then exit. All right. So I'm done. Now I can come back here. Double click on it. Double click on it. And then drives image and which operating system because this is gen 180 i cannot go 6.7 i have to go 6.5 so as a file is actually customized hp customized is 6.5 so i attach as a cd rom virtual cd rom now cool board that's it now it's gonna run automatically you don't need to do anything it's gonna run automatically So you're gonna see the same process, but now you don't need to do anything. Just leave it there. It's gonna automatically boot it. It's gonna load the latest upgraded ESXi files. Whenever it's done with the loading, and then it will show you some options to do the upgrade process. So at that time you just need to have your input. Otherwise, you just wait. So it's gonna take maybe 10 to 15 minutes. It depends on the server, like a remote side and my side, internet connection speed. So it's loading, you have to wait.
loading. User load successfully, so it's gonna take a little bit of time. And within short time, I'll be done. See, the BMRE success 6.5 previously, it was 6.0. Now it's just loading the files. Installation is not, upgrade is not done yet. It's just loading the file from the ISO. So that means what? Now the ESXA is going to be 6.5 instead of 6.0. So it's just loaded. But the upgrade process is not done yet. So I have to wait until this line is finishing up to here. Then it's going to give me some options and I have to follow the options to upgrade from 6.0 to 6.5. Just wait a little bit. Hopefully within short time, we're going to get this option. All right, so uh, enter for continue, F11, see, for accept. So all the instructions is there. You just need to read it. So it's going to show you the whatever the volume you have. And first one is for, I know the first volume is for my SXI. I said yes. Enter, continue. So I hit already enter. It's scanning. All right. Now it's found, it has already an ESXi. So that's why it's commanding you to upgrade. And also my target is to upgrade, right? So upgrade is selected. Just hit enter or OK. Now it's again scanning the systems. All right. So it's almost ready for upgrade. Hit F11. Now start. So it's not going to take that long. Maybe it's going to take four to five minutes or maybe less than that. So very soon it's going to be done. Very soon it's going to be done. All right. Almost. It's 95%. Yes, it's done. Now hit enter reboot. So it says remove the installation media before rebooting. So whenever you hit enter, because we attach the instruction media, see, virtually, right? It's a virtual serial, it has a check mark on it, right? That means it's attached. But whenever you hit reboot, it's gonna be disconnected automatically. Now you check it. See, it's, it's disconnected. So there's no CD. Now it's gonna be reboot. Uh, so you have to wait. Installation upgrade is done, upgrade is done. Here now it's really starting shutting down. So it's gonna be maybe take another four or five minutes. You have to wait for loading the server and then loading the ESXi. You don't need to do anything, just leave it. Just leave it there. It's gonna load automatically everything. All right. So my ESXi is loading now. So this SXI is 6.5, it's not 6.0 yet anymore. And it's gonna be loaded up like within short time. See here, the Amore SXI 6.5, it's not anymore 6.0. And HP Proland 180 Gen 9, you see. And it's loading, see? The user loaded successfully. It's loading the file. So it's gonna be fun. Loading like up to here for 100%. All right, so it's loaded. In short time, it's going to be online. Uh, see here, the status. It's loaded with 6.5. I don't need any more this screen. I'm going to close it. I want to close it. And also, I can log out from, sign out from the server, uh, jump machine. 
Okay. So this one is now, it's loaded. See here, it's changed. Before it was 6.0, now it's 6.5. And it's maintenance mode. Just now, right click on it and maintenance mode, exit maintenance mode. Refresh. Refresh, what happened? Okay. And whenever you just came back from the maintenance, exit maintenance mode, and it's uh, host is upgraded, you're gonna get this alert. So just right click on it and say yes. It's gonna, it will go away. And refresh it. Now you can power on all the machines. Power on. Power on. And power on. So it's going to show you the new version of BMR tools is available for this virtual machine. As I described previously, what I described, I updated. I edited before I do all those actions. First, I select the virtual machine and I went to the uh, right, right click on the virtual machine and go to the edit settings and BM options and then BMR tools and I check mark on those. Now, I didn't. I don't need to be worried about the BMR new tools because it's going to be installed automatically. When I just power on the machine, it's going to be installed automatically. You're going to see it within short time whenever the machine is ready. But it will not take time. It's going to take time. But it's, it's gonna, I can show you with another example here. So this machine, you see here, this machine is running, and there's no alert because you see here, running version is current. That means it's updated. After I upgrade this one, I upgrade this one this morning. To 6.7. So this is updated automatically. So this, all these machines is going to be automatically done. But it don't take time, maybe 10 more minutes, but I'm not waiting for these 10 more minutes. It's going to be done automatically if you have a setup. Okay. So anyway, so this is done. Uh, that's the process. That's the way you can apply firmware upgrade. You can apply SXA host upgrade. That's all.